and a, ma- and a man who used excellent technique as well, who is waxing on and waxing off as we speak, is Uncle B. Blaine Fowler. How you doing over there? Good. Wax on? <laughs> Wax off. One of the greatest movies of all time. Pay defense. The Karate Kid. I love it. Okay, do you believe that BYU is ready to uh, reap the benefits of the first seven games, which were really tough and which were one and six, to win six in a row? Do you think they can win six in a row and get to a bowl game? I, I think that I really believe they can win five of six. I think Fresno State is pretty – good football team. I think East Carolina on the road is a big challenge, especially coming off of what they've come off of. I actually, if BYU comes away with a nice victory at East Carolina and then they beat San Jose State, I feel good about Fresno State because I feel like they could get some positive momentum because right now confidence is not something that abounds on this football team. I think they believe they can win, but if they get in games early and they get down, you know, do you start to have some self-doubt? And so I think these two games are really, really important. So ask me after these two games if they, I think they can win six in a row, and it will depend on how they play here. At that point, it will be four in a row. Right. right. So <laughs> can they win four in a row to win out? Can they yes. beat Fresno State? So right now, yeah. Fresno State looms to me as a team talent-wise that's very similar, um, that's uh, pretty confident, that, that could match up with BYU, and, uh, and it could cause a problem. I feel like if BYU's on a roll, winning two games and starting to be confident and understanding who they are, that they have a chance to win six. Now, if I were to predict, I'd say, well, they probably win five out of six. Um, and that'd be pretty good for a team that just yeah. lost six in a row. Yeah. Even I, if those teams stink. So so my that's what my expectation is. Could they exceed my expectation? Sure. You know, it's. I think this game is really, really important because I think East Carolina is coming into this thing with a chip on their shoulders going, okay, we've played – a crazy schedule. We've we've learned from this. We've gotten beaten up. Now we're going to play teams that match up with us physically better. They're saying the exact same things that BYU's saying. Yes. And so this is a battle of two teams that are trying to find their identity, that have decent skill, that are both young. They're very different. Um, but but I think early in this game is going to be very telling because one team's going to gain confidence early and the other may go, crap. We're not that good. Like, we should be matching up with these guys, and we're not. And so we'll see how that goes. First half is big to me in this game. From an on-the-field perspective, have you seen anything that lets you know or, or gives you more confidence that not necessarily just winning all six, but just getting on a winning streak is possible? Utah State tells me that. So, I, you know, we watch, I watch every single play of every single game on, coach, on film. So I get to see the all-22 and what's going on. I believe that the back half of the schedule, the team's talent level, are very similar to Utah State. That's more of what they're going to see. Three and four right now. Right. And so BYU manhandled Utah State at the line of scrimmage. They, BYU could have been minus three in turnover margin and beaten Utah State. So BYU wants to run the football. In order to run the football, you have to be able to control the line of scrimmage. They did that against Utah State. So my hope is that against these teams, when they don't have the kind of speed and size that Mississippi State or LSU or Wisconsin has up front, or even Utah for that matter, that they can they can match up better. Now, I, they match up okay with Boise State. They didn't get manhandled, but Boise State's execution was at a much higher level than They're BYU's clean, was. They, they were so good and so confident. They've got a veteran quarterback in Rippon that played well. And so – but. And people get this wrong. I said last week after the game that that game was only the second time this year that I felt like BYU couldn't compete physically. And then, you know, the people that tweet out what we're saying said this is only the second game that BYU couldn't compete. They forgot to put the physically on the end. Minor detail. Right, minor detail. I didn't say they competed with LSU. I didn't say that, that, you know, in these games that they've lost. Physically, they didn't get beat up at the line of scrimmage, and just lose every single solitary one-on-one battle. They had a lot of assignment errors against LSU in the wrong gaps defensively, you know, drop balls, things like that. Um, Wisconsin just beat the heck out of them at the line of scrimmage. Mississippi State did the same. Very discouraging. Um, But that's not going to happen the rest of the season. They're not playing anybody that's just going to manhandle them at the line of scrimmage, physically beat them up. So now it becomes an execution thing. And execution is about confidence and believing in what you're doing. So these next two games are really important. they they got to go out against East Carolina. Physically, they're going to match up just fine. In fact, they probably should have an advantage up front. East Carolina can't stop anybody from running the football. And I know that BYU is like 125 in the country and rushing offense, but that's what they want to do. And we saw a glimpse of what they can be against Utah State running it. So if they can go out and dominate the line of scrimmage, um, they have a chance to, to play well and control the clock and do those things against East Carolina. They can win that game, but they can't turn it over a bunch of times. They can't have a huge execution 
uh, issues. And so that's my big question. I don't know if they can do that. They haven't shown that they can do it, but they've played against superior talent most of the year. You know, and so now they got a chance to match up. If they can keep things clean, certainly they, they can get on a roll here. And I think these, these two games, especially this one coming up Saturday, are important. Meanwhile, East Carolina, as we talk with Blaine Fowler here on BYU Sports Nation, they've played a tough schedule too. They yes. played James Madison, the FCS national champ. By the way, College Game Day was there last week. West Virginia, uh, Central Florida, South Florida. They'll play Memphis later, who's ranked now. That's a tough schedule as well. I had to do a double take on some of the statistics with East Carolina. I can't believe this, Blaine. They're giving up 50 points a game and 600 yards. Worst in the country in, in points and, and yards. If BYU can't get it going this week on offense, then it, they, they just can't do it. Well, some, sometimes things are about matchups. Now, here's the good news. Because I'm looking at I'm, – I'm trying to break it down, and I'm going, well, maybe they're really, really horrific in pass defense, but they're decent in run defense. And BYU wants to run the ball. That would be a bad matchup. No, they're bad in both. So they can't when you stop. give up 600, yeah. you're they, just no, bad. They're, they're like 126 bad. in rush defense and 127th in pass defense, so they're 129th overall. So, so they haven't been able to stop anybody from doing anything. 50 points right. a game. So do I think BYU's going to go out and throw it all over the place? Well, that's not the personality of this team right now. I think they'll maybe have more success in the past game that they had. To me, the key is, can they push them around? Which, if you go watch them on film, other teams have just pushed them around defensively. They pushed their front seven around, and they've been able to run the football. Mainly now, in the second half, now, too. And, and here's the thing. East Carolina, they throw it around. Yes. Like, they throw it around. They're they they spread it out, and they get the ball, and they distribute it to multiple receivers, and they get it out. But remember, they're, they're playing from behind in almost every game they've played in. So it's yes. just like nothing to lose. Let's just throw it all Maybe over the Maybe soft place. coverage, right. potentially. And, so, so, and they racked up a lot of yards in second half of games trying to catch up, throwing the football. And so, so for BYU, I mean, it's a big challenge. This is different than, than anything they've really faced. A team that really hasn't run it that effectively, but they've been throwing it because they've been behind. They're going to spread you out and throw it. So BYU has to be really disciplined in their coverages. they got to keep things in front of them. They've got to rally, make them throw the check down route and then rally and get in a three-yard ball. That's what you got to do because they're going to complete balls. East Carolina is going to complete balls. You can't let them get home runs over the top because those are game breakers. And then for BYU offensively, you don't want to get in a scoring match with these guys. You don't, you don't want to get in That a, ain't going to work for BYU. because no, BYU's not prepared. They don't have experience this year in those types of games. So BYU's best bet is – to run the football, to get in the huddle, to force the – East Carolina, they're not going to be good offensively unless they can get a rhythm. Throwing teams need to have rhythm. If they're sitting on the sideline for extended periods of time while BYU grinds it out and gets first downs and then goes down to score, now they're going to come back out. It's going to be like they're starting all over again on that drive. That's the kind of game you want against these guys. You want to control the line of scrimmage. You want to run the football. You want to play action pass and get some big plays over the top and not give up big plays. But most important thing for BYU, period, in these last six games, they have to figure out a way to protect the football and not turn it over. They can do that. If, if they can do that, then they should have a chance to win every game because physically they're going to match up. If you're minus one, minus two, minus three in turnover margin, now you're, you're giving yourself a chance to lose in every one of these games. That can't happen, so that's at a premium in the back half. If the – Objective for the BYU offense is to just get better at execution. And as you mentioned, that comes with experience. It's a, a product of being confident. Where, How much of an improvement do you expect to see execution-wise coming off of the stretch that we've seen from BYU? Well, it, it's – Utah State game, I saw a major jump forward um, in, in the way the line blocked and the way they ran the football. But the turnovers were just – Unbelievable. I mean, how many times does that happen over the years that a team has minus six in turnover margin in a game? It just doesn't typically Crazy. happen. And they were putting the ball on the ground. And then and I felt like they had a step backward against Mississippi State, but it was because, as I mentioned, for the second time this year, I felt like they got manhandled on line. Physically, they got beat up. So that's a hard one to judge. It's hard to execute when you can't win one on one battles at all, when you're not holding your own up front. So I, I think we're going to see more like what we saw against Utah State over these next six, especially this week, where they, they can make plays at the line of scrimmage. They can create seams in the defense to run the ball. They can get receivers open and protect the quarterback offensively. I expect them to take a big step forward. And, and as we've already documented, you guys have been talking about it this morning, East Carolina has struggled defensively. This is not a team that's coming in going, hey, now here's a team we can stop. In their minds, they're telling themselves, hey, this is a, this is a one in six team just like us. We can stop this team. But if BYU moves the football early and gets a couple of touchdowns, they're going to go, man, we, we can't stop anybody. 
I mean, that, those doubts. So far, that's yeah, true. Those doubts start to come in. Um, and so two teams with a fragile psyche right now. Mm -hmm. Early in the game is important. Um, and, and I think that BYU needs to win the line of scrimmage, and I think they can win the line of scrimmage against this football team. And then defensively, when you're always at risk when teams are spreading you out and throwing it around that a three-yard throw turns into a 70-yard touchdown. They just can't do that. They've got to be sound, and they've got to keep – leverage so the outside guys got to stay outside the alley runners got to stay in the alley and the inside guys got to go inside out so they're not getting one-on-one -on -one matchups in the open field and having a risk of missing attack on having a guy go three guys minimum rallying to the ball every time keeping leverage and you know what that is that's trust you have to trust the guys next to you to do what they're supposed to do and too many times this year when BYU's gotten behind or they're getting beat up by these really good teams we see guys getting out of their assignment and going Oh, if I don't get inside on this, my guys aren't going to make a play. I got to go make a play. And then the running back or the receiver bounces it outside and they get a big play. And it's just like, you have got to trust the guy next to you. And, and we have to see that from BYU moving forward. Because now, if they trust one another, they're not going to lose all these one on one matchups like they did against Wisconsin and like they did against Mississippi State. They can hold their own. Now you got to go, I know my, my guy right here, my man, is going to do his job. All I got to do is my job. And, and we're going to win. And that's the mentality they have to have here moving forward because they're not going to play another team like Mississippi State, and they're not going to play another team like Wisconsin. Uh, they're not even going to play another team like LSU. It, BYU fans are funny to me. LSU goes out and loses to Troy, and they play horrifically. They turn the ball over. They just can't get going. And everybody says, man, LSU is horrible. Look at BYU lost to a horrible team. Guess what? They're ranked again this week. Yeah. They're ranked again. They just they beat a top beat 10 team. They beat Florida. And then who did they just beat this week? Auburn? They beat Auburn. Yeah, that's who they beat, I thought right? thought they beat Auburn. Yeah. So, so, then so they guess come what? Up. Yeah. Guess what, fans? LSU doesn't stink. BYU They're back to being good again, BYU, okay? BYU's schedule was really good in the first half of the year. <laughs> they beat but, Auburn, But yeah. BYU did not do what they needed to do against the teams that they matched up with. They should have beaten Utah State handily, and they did not. That's a lost opportunity. That's bad. That was very, very discouraging. And now you have to win and, six in a row. And they should have matched up better with Boise State, and they didn't execute. That was bad. They had an opportunity against Utah where they matched up physically pretty well. They had the football at the end of the game with two minutes to go and down by six. They needed to go down and win the football game. But Utah thinks they can win those games and they can make a play. And right now, BYU's not in that mode. That's, that's a yeah. switch that has to take place for them. To, but when you got your really young guys at all your key positions, best running backs are freshmen. Best defensive lineman is a freshman. Best receiver is a sophomore that's hardly played. Best tight end is a freshman. Quarterback merry-go-round because your veteran guy's been hurt and you've had to change the offense to accommodate that he can't move. Smells like and, one and six. Yeah, and so those are the things that when you get in a game where you have the ball with six down and two minutes to go, you drop balls and you don't make plays. You know, and so we have to have a fundamental change in mindset and we got to get some experience. And I'm okay with where we're at right now. I'm disappointed. I feel like they should have three, maybe, you know, I'd be so pumped with three wins right now. So we're behind where we should be, but I have hope for the back half of the season that somehow they can get some confidence. BYU and East Carolina coming up Saturday. You can uh, see the breakdown with Blaine Fowler tonight, 7 Eastern on After Further Review. And then, of course, countdown to kickoff at 6 Eastern on Saturday. Thanks, Blaine. All right, guys. Check it out tonight.